Hello viewers, welcome to the next video in the tutorial series for E framework. In this video, we are going to discuss about grid view in E framework. Okay, before I proceed for grid view, I would like to show something. So I would go to this URL. So when we were discussing about uh, database access object, right? We have uh, we have shown the, we have seen this screen, right? So here we are displaying the list of clients, and the columns we have are ID, name, email, and status. Okay. Now when we are displaying this screen, right? We could show the pagination over here. We can have the filters on these columns, right? And last we could have the sorting on this column. Right, either this column or email column or status column or ID column, right? And also we can have some data displayed in the footer of the table, right? So um, if we have such kind of uh, table being displayed on the screen, these are the kind of uh, features we would like to have on the screen, right? So e framework provide a data widget which is called grid view, which fulfills all this requirements so so grid grid view is what what i mentioned is a data widget which is used to display the data it get the results from a data provider now that data provider could be an active data provider which means the records that are there in that data provider are active records or it could be array data provider means the records that are there in the data provider are arrays or it could be a SQL data provider which would provide the uh, result set as an array okay and then we would render each row using the columns that are passed to the grid view and we show the output and the tabular format okay when grid view is very useful it is very useful if you are developing admin section because normally when we are developing the admin section we pick up the data from the database and render it on the screen the list of records that we have on the screen right and then we have the actions against those rows which are displayed or like we can have bulk actions uh, on the on those records right so in in all those in for for fulfilling all those requirements grid view is a very powerful widget which can be used okay so what are the key features that we have with grid view widget we have pagination implemented we have the sorting implemented and we have the filters implemented okay for this tutorial i am going to discuss about pagination and sorting and not filtering i would discuss about it in the next tutorial because it would be then uh, too much for one one tutorial so now let's get on to the example okay so here in the record controller i have created an action called action grid right and this is this is the view file the result grid so now let's go over to result grid dot php so here what we have done we have first uh, created an instance of active data provider to which we have passed an active query so client colon colon find so this would result in active query then here we are echoing the grid view widget okay now what are the params that we are passing to this widget so we are passing the data provider and then we are passing the list of columns which we want to display so id name email and status right so let's see the output on the browser first and then we would discuss about this in detail okay so i would say record slash grid so here we have the grid view so this is the summary so it's showing one to four of four items this is the id column but if you see each column has the default sorting on it so if i click on id so ascending order this is descending same for name 
and this is the descending order so by default sorting is there right now let's look at the variations so here the very first thing which we are going to do we are going to enable the pagination in the data provider so i would just uncomment this code so you have to configure the pagination for the data provider in this way so you have to pass the page size over here so right now we have four records and to show the pagination we should have the page size less than the total number of records so i'm just putting the page size as two over here and now let's see the output on the browser so we have got the pagination widget over here so we have two pages so pagination is working so now assume you don't want the pagination on the grid view so what you will do you would just say pagination is false so now if i refresh the screen so pagination has gone away and the summary has changed now it's total four items now right okay so we have enabled the pagination next one is sorting so by default the sorting is there right we have the sorting on the columns okay now we can configure this sorting so let's say only i want the sorting on attributes name and email and not id and status so how would i configure that i can pass the attributes on which i want the sorting so here i want the sorting on name and email column so ne now i am just commenting this and now refresh the browser so the sorting from id and status have been removed we have sorting on name and email address only right so now next so when the grid view is loaded what is the default sort order that should be there so right now i have set this default order for name as sort ascending and email as sort descending so if we refresh the grid view so we have okay i would just remove this actually then you are able to see that okay so here if you see name is ascending so name ascending order and email address descending so we have default sorting for email address as descending so this is how you can configure the sorting in the data provider okay now assume you don't want to do the sorting on the grid view so how can you disable that so for that you just have to pass sort equal to false so now let's refresh the screen so sorting is removed from the grid view okay so i would just enable it again okay moving ahead let's talk about the columns so you can pass the column simply as the attribute name so id name we have passed simply okay now let's say you want to change the label of the column so how you can do that so attribute is email and then you can pass the label over here so that's why on the grid view right now the label is displayed as email address if i comment this line see so it is displayed as email over here but we can change the label like this okay so this is another way of configuring the column next one is for status so attribute is a status but i want to show some custom value not the exact value which we are fetching from the database so we can have value as a string or we can have an anonymous function which would be called for each of the record so this dollar data is the model the the record that we are fetching from the 
database this is the key this is the index the row index and this is the column on which we are displaying the values so here what we are doing we are checking that if status is active then return active but a is capital over here else return inactive so that's why if you see the value over here it's shown as active or inactive but let's say if i comment this value right and if i refresh the screen see so a small case so this is how you can configure the value yes one more one more way is there what you can do you can have a configuration like this for value so we can say value then you would pass an array and in this you would say the you would have the instance of a class or let's say if there is a static function so i'm assuming let's say there is a static function which we can uh, define and the function signature would be like this only so let's say i would say uh, record util is the class and record util sorry record util class name and let's say we have the function called get status value then in that record util class what you are going to do you are going to have this code only so assume i have a class called i'm just creating it in the models folder but ideally it should be in the utils folder so record util and then here you would just copy paste this function this function would be static function so then i would just provide the name of the function so it is get status value so get status value and we have written the value from here okay so now it would be record util class name so just include it so use record util and then we are calling this function get status value okay i am just commenting this code now okay one more thing uh, it's a util class so we should have the full qualified name only the class name function would not be there so we have app models record util okay now let's look at the output so let's refresh the screen so we have got the status here right so this is another way of config configuring the value okay so moving ahead okay let's talk about the action column so we have got the results in the grid view now let's say if we want to show the view link update link and the delete link because these are the operations that can be performed on any row in the grid view so for that e provides an inbuilt class called action column you just have to include this class over here so if i refresh the screen so we have the actions displayed over here so these are the default actions which e framework provides so we have the view edit and the delete okay now you can provide the header so right now there is no header coming up so if you pro if you provide this header over here like this and if i refresh the screen we have the column header displayed okay and you can configure the header options as well so right now the width is much what is um, much more than what is required right so let's say i want to configure the width for this column 
so I, I have just passed width is equals to 80 see so the width has reduced so in this way you can configure the header options and also you can configure the template right so right now uh, we have the template as view update and delete so if i refresh the screen there would not be any change but let's say if i remove view from here and then refresh the screen the view link would go away so this is how you can configure the template for this action column okay moving ahead uh yeah one more thing for the column you can have this properties as well so right now visible is true so this column is displayed status column is displayed now let's say i change it to false so status column is removed from here right so this is how you can configure the visibility now you can change the header for the column right so okay uh, if i just comment this the header is a status right now if i want to change it i can change i can configure the header over here so i can change the header in this way we have discussed about label as well so that's another way of changing the uh, column header label and this is dif a different way of changing the column header okay now you can have the footer configured for the column as well so how can you do that you can have a uh, show footer by default is false right so that's why we are not having any footer over here so let's say if i am setting it to true right now let's see so we have the footer over here now for this column i have configured the footer as testing status so now let's refresh the screen so we have the testing status in the footer row okay so this is about footer so i am just commenting this okay uh, now by default show header is true so we are viewing the header over here right now let's change it to false so header is removed okay so show header is done okay next is layout for the grid view so right now the layout we have is summary summary then items we have and then the pager but here i have changed the layout i have put it first pager then summary and then items so this pager would move up now let's refresh the screen see so pager has moved up so pager summary and items so i have changed the default layout okay next is the row options now let's say i want to configure the html options for each row so if you see a uh, tr has data hyphen key attribute over here only and now we have written this function so what this function is doing it's getting the remainder when we are dividing the index by two right so so let's say index is zero so 0% 2 is 0 which is false right so the class would be even then let's say the index is 1 so 1% 1 2 is 1 so true hence the class would be odd so now let's look at, at the output on the browser so if i refresh the screen so we have for the first row class as even key as 1 and index is 0 so this is what we are returning for returning from here and for the next row we have the class as odd okay so this is how you can configure the row options next is show on empty so by default 
this uh, property is true so if we uh, change the query over here and let's say we change it to client uh, client find where and then we are passing status as hello so there would not be any results right so let's refresh the screen so we have no results found but the grid is still displayed because we have configured this property as true show on empty true so now let's change it to false and refresh the screen see so the grid has gone away so this is how you can configure this show on empty property okay uh, let me revert the query as well okay moving ahead empty cell so i'm just commenting this option to render this so what this property would do so whatever value you provide here right if any cell is there is empty in the grid this value would be displayed over there so i have commented this header option over here so now let's refresh the screen so this hyphen is displayed over here because this cell is empty so this is how you can configure the value for the empty cell that's all for this tutorial i hope i have uh, covered in good detail about the grid view in this tutorial and i will i would discuss about grid view in the further tutorial as well so if you have any questions regarding this tutorial you can post them in the comment section or you can drop us an email at info at ushainformatic.com if you like this video please don't forget to hit the like button and click subscribe to the channel for more such videos thank you very much